Okay, now we're going to go over more properties of the integral, particularly properties relating to inequalities and average value of a function. The first observation is that if I have a continuous function that is greater or equal to zero on the, an interval AB, then its integral over that interval is going to be greater or equal to zero. That is quite clear from the geometric interpretation we have given of the integral because if the function is a continuous non-negative uh, function on the interval then the integral is simply the area under the graph of the function over that interval and that's certainly non-negative. As a consequence, taking the integral over a fixed interval preserves inequalities in the following sense. If f of x is greater or equal to g of x for all x in the interval a, b, then the integral of f over a, b is greater or equal to the integral of g over a, b. In other words, if I integrate on both sides of the inequality, I preserve the inequality, assuming, of course, I integrate over the same interval. This is a direct consequence of the first observation, because if you reinterpret the condition that f is larger or equal to g on a, b, as the fact that f of x minus g of x is greater or equal to 0 on AB, then using the first observation, we get that the integral of the difference f minus g is greater or equal to 0. But now we know that because the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals and integral of a constant multiple, I can pull out the constant. That means that the integral of a difference is the difference of the integrals. In other words, I get that the integral of f over ab minus the integral of g over ab is greater or equal to 0, which can be rephrased as integral of f over ab is greater or equal to the integral of g. In other words, I preserve inequalities. A particular case of preserving inequalities is in the case where I have a lower bound and an upper bound for the function on the interval. In other words, I have a constant little m and another constant capital M such that f of x stays between these two values on the interval a, b, then the integral is going to be bounded below by little m times b minus a and bounded above by capital M times b minus a. This is because, as we just have seen, taking the integral over a fixed interval is going to preserve inequalities. So the first condition gives me that the integral of the lower bound, little m, is less than or equal to the integral of f, which is less than or equal to the integral of capital M over a, b. But now we have seen that integrating constant over an interval, we obtain this constant multiplied by the width of the interval p minus a. So this all relies on the fact that integrating preserves inequalities. Okay, let me dwell a little bit on the geometric interpretation of this observation. If f is a continuous function on a closed interval, then for little m and capital M, I can take the absolute minimum and absolute maximum of the function on the interval, which we know exists in this case, right, under the assumption of continuity of the function f. And on the left-hand side of the inequality for the integral, Right, the lower bound of the integral is little m times b minus a. The geometric interpretation is this rectangle. Right, the height is m, and um, the side that is along the x-axis is b minus a. On the right-hand side, uh, the upper bound for the integral is capital M times b minus a, so that's the area of this rectangle, and of course the area under the graph of f is in between. Now note that if in this inequality that we have at the top, if we divide everything by b minus a, let's say in the situation we, we're in on the picture, that is b is greater than a and therefore b minus a is positive, then we obtain that little m uh, is less than or equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral, less than or equal to m. Let me try to continue uh, interpreting this graphically. So here is the area under the graph. Here, of course, all these considerations could be done for a general f, but it's easier 
to interpret in the case of a continuous positive function. So that's the this red area is simply the integral of the function. So this is between my two rectangles and you see that if I consider the constant 1 over b minus a integral of f of x dx right? this number that I have observed is going to be between little m and capital M the rectangle that has height this value and for the other length b minus a then its area is going to be the product of b minus a with this number and therefore I just get the integral of the function in other words the same area as the area under the graph so this value 1 over b minus a times the integral of the function over the interval a b is the height the fixed height that gives me for the rectangle the same area as the area under the graph of the function in other words I have the same area here above and below so it makes perfect sense here to call that the average value of the function because this is the value that you need to take to get if it was a constant function then you would need to take this particular value for the constant function in order to get the same uh, integral or the same area under the graph uh, as for the function f so that leads us to this definition that the average value of a function f on a closed interval is simply the integral of that function over that interval divided by the width of the interval note that if the function is continuous then uh, this function is going to take its average value on the interval a b that is because of the intermediate value CRM because this is a value that as we have observed is going to be between the minimum and the maximum let's turn to some applications first exercise justify that the integral from 1 to 2 of the root of 5 minus x is greater or equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of the root of x plus 1 so if x is between 1 and 2 and this is the situation we are in for this particular uh, integrals that we are considering right? x ranges from 1 to 2 then I'm going to try to see what I can say about the function square root of 5 minus x on one end and what I can say about the function square root of x plus 1 on the other so for 5 minus x I'm going to look at minus x first and this is between negative 2 and negative 1 so 5 minus x, I add 5 on both sides, I get that 5 minus x is between 3 and 4. And because the square root function is an increasing function, it preserves inequalities. And that means that square root of 5 minus x is between square root of 3 and square root of 4, which of course is 2. On the other hand, looking at square root of x plus 1, if I start from x ranging from 1 to 2, then x plus 1 ranges from 2 to 3. And again, the square root function is increasing, so it preserves inequality, which gives me that square root of x plus 1 is between root 2 and root 3. In particular, root of x plus 1 is not greater than root 3, and root 3 is a lower bound for root of 5 minus x. So I conclude that root of x plus 1 is less than or equal to root of 5 minus x on that interval a, b. Now we have seen that if we have this kind of inequalities on an interval, if we integrate the two functions on that interval, we preserve the inequality. In other words, the integral from 1 to 2 of root of x plus 1 is less than or equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of root of 5 minus x, which is exactly what I wanted to justify. Now we turn to another inequality involving an integral namely we want to justify that the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2 of sine x is between pi over 6 and pi over 3 so this is the integral of sine x so let me just make a simple observation on sine x here we're looking at an, ang an angle x that is going to range from pi over 6 to pi over 2 so x is going to start at pi over 6 and increase towards pi over 2 here is sine x for a certain x 
and you see that when x ranges from pi over 6 to pi over 2 sine x is growing in other words sine x is a increasing function on that interval and it is therefore bounded below by sine of pi over 6 and bounded above by sine of pi over 2 sine of pi over 6 is 1 half and sine of pi over 2 is 1 Therefore, sine x is between 1 half and 1 on the interval pi over 6, pi over 2. Integrating all three functions on this interval pi over 6, pi over 2, we preserve the inequalities. And the integral on the left hand side is 1 half times the width of the interval pi over 2 minus pi over 6, that's pi over 3. So we get 1 half of pi over 3 that's pi over 6, and on the other side we adjust the integral of 1 over an interval of width pi over 3, so we just get pi over 3. And this is exactly the lower and upper bounds that we wanted to obtain for the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2 of sine x. Finally, we want to find the average value of the function root of 4 minus x squared on the interval negative 2, 2. By definition, this average value is going to be 1 over the width of the interval, so 1 over 4, multiplied by the integral of the function on the interval, so integral from negative 2 to 2 of the function root of 4 minus x squared. The problem, of course, then, is to calculate this integral. So, if we look at the graph of the function, this is what it looks like, and you probably recognize something that looks like a circle. We have discussed an example just like that before. And indeed, if you draw the circle centered at the origin n of radius 2, which has equation x squared plus y squared equals 4, the upper half is y equal root of 4 minus x squared, because if you solve for y, you're going to get y is plus or minus root of 4 minus x squared. The plus corresponds to the upper half of the circle, the minus to the lower half. We've discussed a similar situation before. Now the integral is the area under the graph of the function over negative 2, 2. So this is this red area. And you see that this is half the area of the disk of radius 2. In other words, the average value is 1 fourth multiplied by this red area, which is 1 half of the area of the disk of radius 2, which is pi times 2 squared. So the average value of the function is pi over 2. Graphically, what that means is that if we look at the rectangle uh, which has uh, one side of length 4 and the other one of length pi over 2, it's going to have the same area as uh, the area uh, under the graph of the function over negative 2, 2. Now it's time for you to do some homework before you turn to the quizzes.